Hello, good evening. This is Al24 News live from Algiers and starting from the headlines. Since the military takeover, more than 40 people have been killed in Sudanese protests and the capital opposed military rule falling a call last month. Plus, NATO warned Russia today, Tuesday, that it would pay heavy price if it invaded Ukraine. And finally, the Turkish lira ended its fifth worst month ever, setting a new record declining against the US dollar and euro today by 5%. Hello again and welcome. Starting from Algeria, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ram Tala Mamra, took part in the two-day eighth ministerial session of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in the Senegalese capital, Dakar. The invitation of his Chinese Senegalese counterpart, the theme of the meeting was developing the Sino-African partnership and promoting sustainable China-Africa development in the new era. On sideline of the ministerial meeting, the Algerian head of diplomacy was received by Senegalese President Macky Sall, to whom he conveyed fraternal greetings and a message of the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, on bilateral relations as well as development on the African Sea. On the sideline of this ministerial meeting, Ramtan Lamamra held a working session with his Chinese counterpart who conveyed the greetings of the Chinese president and the president of the Majid Tabun. Lamamra confirmed that importance that the head of state attached the strengthening of the strategic partnership with China. Let's have a listen. We have discussed many strategic partnerships between Algeria and the People's Republic of China. We have many common matters and interests that we must strengthen and also accelerate the pace of major structural projects completion registered in the cooperation agenda between the two countries. We share many historical events, as Algeria was one of the countries that supported China in order to obtain a permanent seat in the Security Council. We hope very much to work with our Chinese partners, and we thank Senegal for this forum, which will contribute in strengthening relations between Africa and the People's Republic of China. To a different matter now, since the Sudanese military takeover, more than 40 people have been killed in protests. On Tuesday, Sudanese security forces fired tear gas at tens of thousands of protesters in central Khartoum to oppose military rule following a call last month. More in this report. At least 40 people have been killed in protests in Khartoum since last month's military takeover. Sudanese security forces fired tear gas at protesters in central Khartoum on Tuesday. <laughs> The demonstration was the latest expression of resistance to military rule since last month's overthrow, which ended the collaboration between the civilians and military groups. However, following international denunciation in mass protests, Al Burhan reinstated Hamdok in a deal that was criticized by the country's pro-democracy movement, which was opposed to the military's involvement in politics. The Burhan Hamdok agreement, on the other hand, was encouraged by the United Nations, African Union, Western countries, along with Saudi Arabia and Egypt, which has close ties with Sudan's military. Hamdok asserted that he had partnered with the military to stop the fighting and not to waste the gains of the last two years. General Mohamed Hamdan de Gallo, the deputy head of Sudan's Governance and Sovereign Council, claimed that the deaths during protests are being investigated, blaming police and armed forces. Ugandan troops have passed through into the Democratic Republic of the Congo as part of a giant operation against the Allied Democratic Forces, an armed group that both neighboring countries accuse of exterminating civilians. Zara Frujani on what follow will explain more. Ugandan Democratic Republic of Congo carried out joint air and artillery strikes against the Allied Democratic Forces militia on Tuesday. Both countries promised to continue working together to secure the targeted area. The two countries said early Tuesday that the group, the deadliest of dozens of militias in the DRC's mineral-rich east, had been bombarded with artillery and airstrikes. Ugandan military spokesman Flavia Bekwaso said in a statement that the targets were hit with precision. Later, a large number of Ugandan soldiers entered the DRC at the Nobili border, post in North Kivu state. DRC Army spokesman Leon Richard Kasanga said in a statement, 
The Uganda Special Units will carry out search and control operations to clear and secure ADF positions affected by this morning's strikes. Explosions and artillery fire have been reported in North Kivu's Watlinja district as well as Buga and Chabi districts, the ADF's known bases in neighboring Ituri province. The move is not universally supported in the DRC, where many critics recall Uganda and Rwanda's part in the decades-long instability in the country's east. In U.S., three students were killed and eight people, including a teacher, were injured Tuesday night when a 15-year-old boy opened fire at high school in rural Oxford, Michigan. Oakland Police Chief Michael McBay said that suspect was students at the same high school in Michigan. However, the motive, the motive behind the crime was unknown. According to the, the district police, the injured people were transferred to the district hospital while their conditions are stable. Reactions all over the world started to take place after the uproar caused by the new COVID-19 variant of Macron. Many international borders have been closed as the virus made its way to dozens of countries worldwide. Usama Yadi clarified. Tracking the new COVID-19 variant has become compulsory, as this strain made its way through the world and many countries still consider it unknown. However, dozens of countries changed their sanitary policy in bid to face this variant. World Health Organization showed worry over the reaction of some countries towards the virus, explaining that closing borders or banning certain people from entering some countries is not the best response. In addition, the same organization urged people to avoid traveling in the current period, especially those who are over 60. The Saudi press agency announced detecting the first Omicron variant case, adding that the infected person has been isolated with all the ones who had a direct contact with him. The Saudi Health Ministry announced that the traveler came from a North African country. The Latin American country Brazil announced detecting the first two cases of the new variant. The cases involved two missionaries living in South Africa. According to Brazil's health service agency, the two people will be sent to confirmation laboratory for further analysis. As for the US, travelers are to face tougher restrictions in COVID testing, as well as tightening travel rules. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the USA, entering the country requires a negative COVID testing performed within one day of the departure. In Europe, Medicines Agency Executive Director Emmer Cook stated that laboratory analyses should indicate whether the blood of the vaccinated people has enough antibodies to neutralize the virus, while BioNTech CEO stated that a partnership of his company with Pfizer would provide a strong protection against Omicron. Japan began administering COVID-19 boosters to healthcare workers and nationwide today, Wednesday, as the country braces for the potential impact of the Omicron variant concerning a new strain of the coronavirus that scientists worldwide are scrambling to research. The Turkish lira ended its fifth worst month ever, setting a new record declining against the US dollar and the euro today by 5%. This comes after President Recep Tayyip Erdogan advocates deep cuts in interest rates despite widespread criticism and high inflation. Hussam reports. The Turkish lira plunged to an all-time low of 14 against the dollar after President Recep Tayyip Erdogan repeated his defense of a new economic model based on lower interest rates despite inflation approaching 20 percent. Following this, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan ordered an investigation into possible currency manipulation. Turkish president stated that the lira's strict interest rate policy will not lead to a decline in inflation and promised success in what he called economical independence, and that an increase in the exchange rate will lead to a higher prices and depreciation of the dollar. He explained that it will not directly affect investment, employment, and production, and stressed that he prefers a competitive exchange rate because it will lead to more investment and employment. He emphasized that Turkey has changed and will no longer surrender to external economical threats. Turkey has changed and it is no longer the old Turkey and it is no longer surrenders to the threats directed against it through the financial markets. Our economy has the ability to confront these threats and we will stand together as a force and we will stand together as a force in confronting them as it is no longer possible to weaken us and hinder us through foreign currency speculation.
It's noteworthy that the Turkish lira record of 13.87 against the dollar means that it has lost more than 46% of its value this year. And for more information over the this currency crisis over Turkey, joining me live via phone call, Mr. Abdurazak Tuahriya, is an Algina author and sociologist researcher. Question one, Mr. Tuahriya, based on the statistics, given Turkish economy growth has risen in the last three quarters. But on the other hand, the Turkish currency witnessed an unbelievable decrease in its value. So why is Turkey lira crashing and taking into consideration the stats? Will this currency crisis worsen? First of all, thank you, Rahim, for having me today. Welcome. Well, the new economic model that Turkey is pushing in aims to grow the national economy by boosting an estimate. Unemployment, she seems that this strategy will likely record more than 10% growth by the end of this year. The real answer is some trouble with Turkey after Turkey's central bank cut interest rates by a four percentage point on November. Yeah. And this was the third cut since September, and seeing it, it was slash rates again in December. And also, the leader pushed where Turkey slashed interest rates in November. I think because inflation is anything but, but low right now. We know that economies all over the world are getting squeezed by price pressures due to supply chain bottlenecks and shortage. Uh, Mr. Tuharia, the lira lost more than 20, 25% of its value against the United States dollar in November. And in Turkey, especially the opposition political parties, claims that this, this currency fall is clearly the authority choice willingly. I think when uh, central banks appear to lose their independence, investors get jumpy. They worry that political goals will determine a country and rest rate policy. Rather, the economic fundamentals are also the monetary authority of a country, usually the central bank, keeps a check on inflation by controlling demand through managing the borrowing rates. So, when the central bank increases the borrowing rates, uh, the economic loans become direct, which contract the purchasing power in the economy during now inflationary times, when producers have more simply Mr. Abdelazak Tuahriya, thank you so much, and Arthur from Algeria, thank you so much. For another matter, NATO warned Russia that it would pay a heavy price if it invaded Ukraine. Foreign Minister of NATO members' countries met in Riga, the capital of Latvia, and discussed ways to deter a Russian invasion of Ukraine. After Moscow mobilized tens of thousands of its soldiers and strengthened its military presence on the borders between the two countries. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned Tuesday in Riga during NATO member countries' foreign ministers meeting that any new Russia aggression against Ukraine would call for a dangerous response. Any escalatory actions by Russia would be of great concern to the United States as they would to Latvia, and any renewed aggression uh, would trigger serious consequences. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also announced that the Alliance forces were deployed for the first time to the eastern side of Europe due to Russian threats to Ukraine and added that NATO has to be prepared for the worst and that any future Russia aggression against Ukraine would come at a high price. There will be a high, a high price to pay for Russia uh, if they once again use force against the independent sovereign nation uh, Ukraine. Uh, we have demonstrated our ability to impose costs, economic, political actions, and also uh, uh, over the years also increased our uh, military presence in this region uh, just to make sure that all allies are totally uh, defended and protected against, against any Russian aggressive actions. For its part, Russian President Vladimir Putin in an investment forum has warned NATO that their deployment of weapons and troops to Ukraine represent a red line for Moscow and could trigger a strong response. If strike systems are deployed on Ukraine soil, the estimated flight time would be 7 to 10 minutes or even 5 minutes for hypersonic weapons. What are we supposed to do then? We will then be forced to do something similar to counter the threat. And we have the capabilities, even now. We have successfully tested a March 9 capable submarine launched hypersonic missile, and it will be in service starting early next year. 
and its flight time will also be five minutes. But what's the goal? What is it for? Creating these kinds of threats is what we see as red lines. Turkey, on the other hand, expressed the will to mediate between Russia and Ukraine, hoping that this region does not become a region dominated by war, but rather a region dominated by peace. This rise in tension comes after Ukraine's military intelligence reported that Russia had amassed tens of thousands of its troops around Ukraine's borders and was preparing for an attack by the end of January or the beginning of February. Russia said on Wednesday it had ordered U.S. embassy staff who have been in Moscow for more three three years to leave uh, the country by January 31st in a response to what he said was U.S. decision to reduce the working hours of Russian diplomats. The move comes after Moscow's ambassador to the United States said last week 27 Russian diplomats and their families had been expelled from the United States and would leave on the 30th of January. Russian Foreign Minister spokesman Maria Zakharova stated that Russia intend to respond in, in, in kind saying that U.S. embassy employees who have been in Moscow for more than three years must leave Russia by January 31. There were fears that Iran, new administration that was elected in June, would undo the first round of talks and claimed that the only legitimated concern for discussion was the list of economic sanctions that the U.S. must lift. Iran agreed to discuss complementing steps with the agreement which has made progress in the nuclear discussion. The Algerian Health Minister and General Director for Health Prevention and Promotion held a seminar under the theme of end inequalities to end AIDS discrimination as part of celebration of the 1st December as the International Day of HAV. HIV or AIDS remains a major public health issue affecting millions of people around the world. Inequality, division and contempt for human rights are among the failures that have allowed HIV to become and remain a global health crisis currently. December the 1st was an opportunity to present the strategies for accelerating the response to this disease, as well as to discuss measures to be taken to meet the challenges and contribute to the ambitious goals ending AIDS as public health problem by 2030. On the same context, Alejandro Alvarez, the UN resident coordinator in Algeria, has announced to our channel Al24 News that Algeria has made remarkable progress in the fight against the HIV. This is an important uh, day to, on one side, uh, celebrate the achievements of uh, national authorities, civil society organizations here in Algeria for uh, so much work that is being done. It takes courage, it's a lot of work, and uh, they are doing a tremendous uh, work here in Algeria. So. He emphasized on rallying to confront the inequalities that drive HIV and to reach people who are currently not receiving essential health services. People suffering from the, you know, HIV and uh, AIDS uh, suffer discrimination um, and, and we need to reach out to them. Uh, we need to help these people to come out uh, in all you know, uh, equality. Um, without discrimination to take, you know, uh, uh, health services. On the other hand, Adel Zadam, the director of LONICIDA, has given the latest statistics regarding people infected around the world generally and Algeria specifically. People uh, have been affected since the, the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and uh, last year, in 2020, uh, we registered uh, 1,700 new infections and in the world, one. 1,500,000 new infections, it's a very a huge number, even there is a very, very good progress, but uh, we are far from the, the target we, we defined together to, to reach by 2020. Vigilance is more important than ever, and our entire society must be mobilized to intensify and double efforts in order to achieve the goals that Algeria has set. Being united and responsible remains the only way to combat AIDS. Honduras ruling party candidate concedes presidential election concession means Zamora Castro will become country's first female president and the first from the left in 12 years. Nasri Asfora, the ruling party candidate in the Honduras election, has conceded to his opposition rival Zamora Castro, who will become the country's first female president and the country's first left-wing leader in 12 years. Colin Castro, 
calling Castro president elect National Party counter Nasri Asfura said he visited opponents at her family home to offer his congratulations for winning Sunday vote. South Korea exports GU the fastest piece in November thanks to post-pandemic recoveries in major trading partners. Exports increased by 32% in November compared to the same month last year. South Korea recorded more than 5,000 new coronavirus cases, which alarmed exports. More in this report. South Korea exports grew at the fastest pace in November thanks to post-pandemic recoveries in major trading partners that pushed up demand for chips and petrochemicals. Exports increased by 32% in November compared to the same month last year, the highest increase since August. According to Trade Ministry, this month, total exports reached about $60 billion, the highest monthly sum ever. 13 of the 15 primary items saw sales increase with semiconductors, petrochemicals and vessels. Meanwhile, exports to all nine main trading partners increased with increases of about 27%, 22% and 18% to China, the United States and the European Union. The chief executive of vaccine maker Moderna raised doubt on the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccinations against the variation on Tuesday, which disturbed financial markets and raised fears of more supply chain disruption. However, the Omicron new variant may threaten the export economy. And on Tuesday, South Korea recorded more than 5,000 coronavirus cases, but no Omicron cases had been detected yet. Algerian national team with its first match against its Sudanese counterpart. The match was played in the framework of the first round of Group D in the FIFA Arab Cup, which is taking place in Qatar. Let's follow the support. A first match and a first success for Algeria's Warriors at Ahmed Ben Ali Stadium this afternoon. The Phoenix beat the Eagles of Sudan by a score of 4-0 on the first round of Group D. Captain Bully's teammates started with a positive energy as the Algerian striker Baghdad Bounaja succeeded to score the first goal for his country in the 11th minute. Algeria's Phoenix maintained their pressure on the Sudanese counterpart until the 37th minute, as Bounaja added the second goal for Algeria. The first half-time showed the dominance of Algeria's team, as Jamal Belamri signed the third goal of the match for Algeria in the 43rd minute, to make the score difference bigger for the Sudanese team. The second half-time was even more exciting as Hilal Sudani Algeria's player scored the fourth goal to deepen the difference between the two countries and the score remained until the end of the match. Algerian coach Majid Bougara expressed his happiness following the winning of his first match in the tournament and showed his satisfaction with the players and the score as he stressed that his players should focus on the next match against Lebanon which will take place on Saturday, December 4th. Lovely. Archaeologists in Peru have said a mummy and earth on the outskirts of the capital Lima could be between 100 and 100, 1,000 years old. The mummy was found in the burial chamber about a meter long and 1.4 meters deep in Camarfuga, which is about 24 kilometers east of Lima. More about this new mummy has been found in this report. Fully bound in ropes and with its hands covering its face, this is the mummy that has been discovered in an underground tomb in Peru. The discovery came as a surprise as the team was not searching for a mummy. Archaeologists from the National University of San Marcos found the mummy in good condition in Calla Marquela, a significant site 25 kilometers inland from the coastal city and capital Lima, Peru. It's the mummy of an inhabitant of the High Andean region. It was buried approximately between 800 or 1200 AD. Radiocarbon dating will give us a more accurate chronology. It apparently belongs to the Chakya culture, a culture that developed in the mountains of Lima, in the province of Huarochiri in the late intermediate period. Although the mummy's striking pose, bound by ropes and in fetal position, appears chilling at first sight. However, researchers believe it is a southern Peruvian funeral custom. The mummy, thought to be a male, likely predated the Inca civilization, which dominated the southern part of South America 500 years ago. It's thought the man was aged about 25 to 30 years old and was likely an important person in contemporary society. 
The tomb also contains ceramics, vegetable remains and stone tools. Also, several marine mollusks were also discovered outside the tomb. This mummy is estimated to be between 800 and 1,200 years old. The findings indicate the area was likely multi-ethnic and would have been occupied by settlers from the coast and the mountains. Well, to this end, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a reminder of our main stories. Since the military takeover, more than 40 people have been killed in Sudanese protests in the capital to oppose military rule following a call last month. Plus, NATO warned Russia today that it would pay a heavy price if it invaded Ukraine. And finally, the Turkish lira ended its fifth worst month ever. Setting a new record declining against the US dollar and the euro today by 5%. That's all what we have for now. Thank you so much for being with us. Take care of yourself. Good night.